Look, Noctowl has always been one of those mediocre Pokemon that I just always wish was good. So, luckily I've been cooking up a little something for our owl friend, and I'm feeling pretty confident in this thing. Listen, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, and it would really mean a lot if you could support the channel. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. So, my opponent is going to lead off with the Salazzle. This thing comes in here, just sassing up the place. And I decide to lead off with the Electros. This thing is here to do two things. Give you both the Suck and the Shock. And you're about to get shocked. So, essentially, I am a Salt Vested Eel who is pretty fit to handle this thing. I can take any special attack it wants to throw at me. As it ends up going for the Toxic. So, I stay in and I go for the knockoff. The reason being is that a lot of the time you see Salazzle running uh, something like a Salic Berry. And if they start to get some speed and some nasty plots... It's definitely a really scary Pokemon. So, being Toxic Poison is unfortunate. It's going to kind of ruin the longevity of my special defense wall. But I imagine they're definitely going to switch out here, which means I can go for a Volt Switch. Now, what that does is gives me a little bit of momentum because I see what they switch into, and I can essentially bring in a matchup accordingly, as they're actually going to go into the Olive Tree, and this actually gives me a pretty good opportunity to try to get the Knock Tower going early. So... This is a pretty unique owl moveset in that it relies on some pretty interesting stuff. So essentially, hypnosis is very important on this Pokemon for two reasons. One, if I connect on a hypnosis, which is unlikely as it's 60% accurate, which usually means 30%, uh, I can put something to sleep. But if I miss, I can actually also activate a blunder policy. Anytime you miss an attack, blunder policy is going to double my speed. So I go for the hypnosis here as that thing is definitely going to end up switching out. And they decide to bring in the Grimmsnarl. And Grimmsnarl is actually going to get hit by Hypnosis. We do land it, which is amazing. And now this gives me an opportunity to try to set up the Noctowl. So, uh, with this thing asleep, we guarantee that it stays asleep for the next turn. As I can essentially go for that nasty plot, give myself a nice little special attack boost. And with this thing's Prankster, I'm concerned about it being something like dual screens with a light clay. Uh, in general, Grimmsnarl is not the greatest Pokemon to try to set up against. But hey, listen, you don't have a lot of opportunities to get Noctowl going, so I'm literally, I'm going for it. Uh, and at this point, I got the Nasty Plot up, and I'm feeling good, feeling good. I'm gonna go for that Terra Ground. The reason why we are Terra Ground on this is to be able to hit Steel types, but also I wanted to be able to ensure that if they switch into the Garganacle, I was gonna be able to hit that thing for some really big damage. So I put the Earth on my Owl Head, and I fire off a Terra Blast, as this thing does just stay in and continues to sleep, which is honestly fine. Uh, but after a Nasty Plot, I'm gonna be able to do well over half with the nice little stab we get from the Terra, and I'm actually going to be a bulky Noctowl. Knowing that I can take pretty much an attack from anything puts me in a really good spot here. Um, unfortunately, I don't quite have the speed. So they're actually going to end up waking up. They go for the trick. This thing is Prankster. Of course, able to go first, and I'm thinking, oh god, what's it about to give me? It ends up giving me a lagging tail. Straight up, pulling an Onyx behind me has now made this Noctowl so incredibly slow that it's actually kind of funny. It, this team relies on the sticky web and being able to activate that blunder policy, but now I've got Slow Noctowl, who actually does still grab a kill here on the Grim. So Grimmsnarl going down, honestly super amazing. That's a pretty annoying Pokemon to deal with, as now they're gonna bring in the Arbeliva again. Now this is a Pokemon that I'm kind of built for. I'm, I'm Terra Ground at this point, so I'm weak to its grass types, but I know that being fully invested in HP, uh, I can actually definitely take an attack from this thing, and I'm thinking, you know what, screw it, we've made it all the way here, I'm gonna go for the Air Slash. It fires off the Giga Drain, and even being my ground type ass, I'm able to take it nicely, because uh, if there's one thing that Noctowl does have going for it, it's the fact that it's got a pretty decent special bulk. So, that now allows me to fire off an Air Slash, and at full, that is gonna still take care of the Olive Tree, and we're going on a little, little mini Noctowl Terror here, uh, while I am still pulling the old lagging tail behind me, so... On the free switch, they actually end up bringing in the Glamora. And I'm thinking, hold on, I can actually take an attack from this thing. It goes for the Earth Power, does laughable damage to my <laughs> bulky as hell Noctowl. I'm able to take that while also firing off a Terra Blast. And they have truly underestimated the thickness of this owl, which honestly, I don't blame them. They, you really never see Noctowl used competitively. Um, and uh, <laughs> seeing this thing grab a kill, another kill there is amazing. So now they're going to switch into the Ditto. They figure, you know what, if I can't beat the Noctowl, just gonna straight up turn into it and uh, they basically just turn themselves into me and of course this thing is going to be way faster so I decided to just let the Noctowl go down here I was able to poke essentially enough holes in their team that where I, I feel like I can kind of finish it up here so they finished me off with the air slash that is fine uh, mostly because we know these things ditto is always choice scarf and uh, it's gonna be locked into the air slash here meaning I can have a switch and kind of figure out what I need to do um, I'm gonna go back into the Electros and 
The reason for that is, of course, I can take air slashes all damn day long, and I'll be damned if you're gonna beat me with my own Noctowl. So, I'm gonna end up going for the knockoff, and the reason for that is there's no situation where this uh, Ditto stays in here, and I'm gonna be able to get rid of the item on whatever they wanna switch into. As it turns out now, we're, we're playing Minecraft, baby. Garganackle comes in, and this is an extremely annoying Pokemon, literally no matter what. So I get the knockoff, which is actually good, because that's going to limit its ability to recover with the leftovers, and I kind of have to figure out what I want to do to this thing. So uh, I'm actually just gonna end up going for the Giga Drain. I figured, you know, this thing probably actually can't hit me that hard in return, and while the toxic damage will start to stack up, I am still in a pretty decent position, I feel like, as they actually end up committing the Terra pretty much all the time. You see Garganacle, it's gonna go for the Terra. Uh, and this one is gonna be the Terra Ghost. So, uh, they're likely thinking I go for something like a Drain Punch that Electros sometimes goes for. Uh, the Giga Drain, though, is not gonna do a whole lot of damage. Luckily, at least I was able to get rid of this thing's leftovers. As now, it does what every fucking Garganachi does, and that is go for the Salt Cure. So, basically trying to, trying to cure this Eel in Salt to be able to eat this thing. And I will not be letting you eat my Unagi today, so... Uh, the, the recoil from the salt cure and the toxic is a little bit much here And I really wish I was able to get the knockoff when this thing was ghost type, but you know it is what it is So I go for the volt switch here. I actually end up landing a critical hit Which is amazing because now this thing is in pretty easily killable range So now I can switch into whatever I would like and I decide to go Arbok uh, The reason is I can potentially start to set up Arbok and maybe get a late game sweep with this thing as uh, I also get an intimidate in the process, but they're gonna go for the recover. They say, I got these built-in leftovers and recover is gonna put this thing to where it's still <laughs> really gonna be difficult to take care of. But uh, I figure this thing does not have as much offensive pressure as it would like against Arbok. So I go for one coil here as they just end up going for uh, the salt cure. So uh, the good news is they committed their Terra. And the bad news is I can't really go for a dra Dragon Terra of my own to start getting scale shot boosts. Um, but I do still have pretty solid damage, especially after uh, a plus one on this thing. So I'm gonna end up going for the gunk shot. I, I figure I can guarantee that I hit it with the coil and I basically roll myself a chance to get a poison on it. But of course I do not, but even better is they actually end up going for the curse. And that is gonna end up knocking this thing out himself. And the reason is because once you turn into a ghost type, curse becomes a whole different thing. And that is actually kind of hilarious because it sacrifices himself Sets a curse on the Arbok, which does uh, hit me with some damage, plus the salt cure. Uh, it's just starting to stack up. But uh, honestly, we'd love to see the ghost type curse there. It kind of comes in clutch because it knocks itself out. But what it also does in the process is allows them to freely switch into Ditto here against my Arbok. That's going to turn themselves into me, intimidate me with my own ability. And now I'm going up against a, a pretty damn scary Arbok, which is actually me. But. Uh, they of course outspeed because they're a ditto and the earthquake does take care of the Arbox. And I'm thinking, damn, the, uh, the momentum switch from them going for the curse there actually might have been in the long run kind of bad. But again, we did mention earlier that dittos are pretty much always choice scarf. And seeing as that thing went for earthquake, uh, it has locked itself into that. And I can freely go back into the Electros as I am levitating over here and just kind of floating around in the air. You cannot earthquake me. And I know that they are forced to switch which then allows me to go for a Volt Switch, and I'm just out here pivoting all over the place. I really, I truly just need all the momentum that I can possibly get here, as uh, they are gonna end up going into this Alazzle. They're kind of running out of options here. My Volt Switch literally leaves this thing on like one HP, uh, which is honestly kind of insane, but this does set me up in a spot where I found myself a win condition. So, I go into the Dustnor, and Dustnor is here. I'm a Choice Banded offensive one with Shadow Sneak and their last Pokemon is gonna be that Ditto. So what I can do is go for the Shadow Sneak, that's gonna finish off the Salazzle with the priority, and then it forces Ditto to turn into Dusknor, and I know that I can beat myself 1v1 because I am Choice Banded, and I can do way more damage to them than likely they'll be able to do to me. So Ditto comes back in one last time. This guy's out here just stealing my team, looking at my movesets and just having a good time doing it, but essentially all I have to do at this point is go for that Shadow Sneak, it should be a two hit KO, uh, of course, theirs is faster because they are Scarf, but Dustnor is bulky enough to uh, be able to take two of them, and uh, I'm able to do over half to them. So, that puts us in a spot where another Sneak takes care of it, and that is going to be the end of the game. So, that was honestly a really fun one. Anytime there's a Ditto around, though, it makes things way more stressful than I feel like they need to be, but 
uh, you know, regardless, super fun match. I had a lot of fun with it. This team is extremely fun to use. And uh, let me know what you guys thought. Leave a comment. I do always appreciate the support. And I will see you next time. Peace out.